Hi, my name's Alistair Chapman and I'm a freelance cameraman and producer based in the UK. About five years ago, I was approached by Sony to review a new camcorder they were about to release. That camcorder had three full resolution 1920 by 1080 sensors, recorded using XD cam codec, and had this lovely manual lens with three rings for zoom, iris and focus that were fully manual. And if you can guess which camera that is, it's Sony's EX1. And the EX1 camera for me was a real groundbreaking camera. It really changed the way I work and changed the way many production companies work. Because for the first time, it offered a really good full HD picture in a handheld Handycam camcorder. Since then, the EX1, EX1R and EX3 have been adopted by production companies and broadcasters around the world as a very, very popular camera. However, in Europe, the specifications for broadcast television, which are laid out by the EBU, the European Broadcast Union, only allow the use of the EX1, EX1R and EX3 in their Tier 2J category. Now, that's a category that allows cameras to be used for journalism and broadcast news. So you can use these cameras for broadcasting, but only in journalistic and news applications. The reason why they're only allowed in that tier is because the EBU deems that 35 megabits per second XD cam recording isn't quite good enough for long form productions. For long form programs, the EBU requires that you use 50 megabits 422 when using MPEG-2. You could get around this with an EX1 or EX1R quite simply by adding an external recorder. And indeed, many, many production companies do that because the picture quality, the images that the EX cameras produce is really very, very good. So it's very often used with an external recorder to get that 50 megabits or higher minimum recording level. 50 meg uh, 422 is incredibly important to us. Um, we uh, deliver to all the major broadcasters, Channel 4, ITV, BBC, and they are demanding that as the benchmark uh, camera acquisition and then delivery on SR, etc. But that's why it's so important to us. My ideal camera would be a handheld camera that's relatively light to use. It would be three half inch sensors, it would be full raster at 1920 by 1080 and it would be 50 megabits per second. All of those things will allow the broadcasters to accept it as full HD and allow a cost effective budget saving camera that my self shooting produ producer directors can use during observational documentaries. Clearly Sony have been listening to their customers and a couple of weeks ago I got a telephone call from Sony, could I take a look at a new camcorder? And here it is. This is Sony's new PMW 200. It's fully compliant with EBU R118 Tier 2L. So that means that this camcorder can be used for long form HD broadcast productions. And that's because this camcorder has three half inch sensors and has 50 megabits per second 422 recording. Many aspects of this camera are shared with the original EX1 and EX1R. The lens and sensor assembly is very, very similar. It is slightly more sensitive and it does have slightly less noise, thanks to some improvements in processing going on in the camera. And when I've been out shooting with the camera, you can see that in the images. It produces a very nice, very clean picture, even in poor or low light. But now with the PMW 200, as well as being able to record at 35 megabits per second should you choose, you can also record the same 50 megabits per second 422 format that the XD Cam optical disc camcorders shoot. This also makes it very easy for archive and backup because you can take the footage directly off the S by S cards in the PMW 200 and copy them to optical disc. And when you copy them as video files to XDCAM optical disk, that also generates proxy files. So if you have a proxy based workflow, that can be made to work with the PMW 200. So let's take a closer look at the camera itself and its ergonomics and usability. It's very similar to the EX1. So anybody that's used an EX1 or EX1R will be able to pick this camera up and use it straight away. Again, we have the three manual rings on the lens, manual focus, or pull the ring forward for autofocus, manual zoom, 
and manual iris. There's no need to have to switch from one mode to the other. You can have all three all at the same time, all in manual should you choose. If you need to, you can also have auto iris and as I said, auto focus. So it makes it a very simple camera for journalists to use. The hand grip on the PMW200 is different to the EX1 and EX1R. They used to have a rotating hand grip, but that meant that the hand grip was quite a way out from the side of the camera body and made the balance slightly awkward. By integrating the hand grip into the body of the camera, the camera is much better balanced. And in fact, if you put a BPU60 battery on the back of the camera and you hold the camera in the middle of the handle, you'll see that it balances almost perfectly. This really is a nice, well-balanced camera to use and to handhold. Audio inputs and audio outputs are as you would expect. Two XLR audio ins with phantom power should you need it, or line level should you need that. Again, this is required for the EBU specifications. For monitoring and viewing your images while you shoot, there is a flip-up LCD screen. Again, this is different from the one on the EX1. And actually, I really like this one because it does mean that you can actually see the LCD screen from either side of the camcorder. So when you're shooting interviews, working in a one-man band situation, you can operate the camera from either side and still see your framing. On the side of the camera, you have switches for gain and white balance. And these are positioned in exactly the same place and way as they would be on a full-size shoulder mount camera or almost any other broadcast camera. Again, this makes it really easy for people to switch to and from this camera. You haven't really got to read the manual. It's very easy, very straightforward to use and logically laid out. Moving back just behind them is the menu button to bring up the camera's menus and a scroll wheel that allows you to move and navigate you around those menus. And the menu system and menu structure, again, is very similar to the EX1, EX3 cameras. So be very familiar to most of you. As well as the scroll wheel, you can also use the up, down, left and right arrows that are underneath the LCD screen on the top of the camera's handle to navigate through the menus. This makes it very easy to get around and change those functions that you need to change. You also have direct menu, just like the EX1. So many of the menu's functions can be accessed by scrolling around the icons on the LCD screen and selecting them directly. And this is a very fast way of working. As well as being able to record in high definition, the PMW200 can now also record in standard definition. On the side of the camera, there are buttons for zebra, peaking, full auto, and assignable buttons that you can assign your favorite functions to, as well as a button for the picture profiles. Picture profiles are a really useful tool because picture profiles allow you to create an in-camera look. They also allow you to use different gamma curves. Now a standard gamma curve like Rec. 709, the normal HD video gamma curve, has a quite electronic look to it. But Sony's hypergammas, which are available in the PMW200, have a much more natural look, a more filmic look because of the way they handle highlights and roll off overexposure much more gently. As well as the ability to change the gamma curves, you can also change the color matrix, which allows you to change the colorimetry of the camera for either a specific look or to match other cameras. You can also adjust the detail settings, which controls how sharp the image appears. I really recommend that everyone that uses these cameras plays with the picture profiles and learn how to set them up and learn about what they do because they're a really valuable tool that can really enhance the look of your images. If you're unsure, there's plenty of resources on the internet where you can download sample picture profiles or find out exactly what the various functions do. Towards the rear of the camera, there's the audio controls. There are switches for selecting whether the audio is recorded from the internal microphone or from an external mic via the XLR connectors, as well as switches for selecting between auto and manual audio gain, and of course two large rotary controls for controlling that manual audio gain. On the back of the camera you have your input and output connectors, and there's plenty of choice on the PMW200. You have HDMI out as well as HDSDI out, so plenty of monitoring options. There's also a USB port for offloading your media from the SBIS cards, an iLink connector, also known as Firewire, and additionally, 
there is an AV output jack giving you composite video and audio out. Below the HD-SDI output, there are two additional BNC connectors. The top one is for timecode, and you can choose whether it's timecode in or timecode out. And below that is a Genlock in or video out connector. These are really useful features to have, especially on multi-camera shoots where you may need to synchronize both timecode and the cameras via Genlock, something the EX1 didn't have. So what does having 422 and 50 megabits per second really mean from a practical point of view? Well, for a start, there's an improvement in picture quality. 422 color sampling gives you better color fidelity. That's going to help if you're doing chroma key, blue screen or green screen work, where you need all the chroma resolution that you can get. The 50 megabit codec has more data to play with, so it'll have fewer artifacts than the 35 megabit per second codec of the original EX1 and EX3 cameras. So there you have it, the PMW200 from Sony. This really is a great camcorder. It's 50 megabit, 422, three half inch sensors. So complies with EBU R118 tier 2L. So you can use it for long form program production without any restrictions at all. And that's bound to make it popular amongst production companies. I really like the pictures it produces. They're clean, high resolution, and great dynamic range. On top of that, you have picture profiles, so you can customize the look to suit your needs and your requirements. I really rate this camera, and I think it's going to be a big hit.